So today we're going to be talking about follow-up. And listen, you can get a million leads, but if you don't follow up, there, there's, there's nothing what you're going to do with those million leads. I built my business by being able to follow up. I was the master at follow-up. So, you know, it doesn't matter everything you do, a great prospector and everything, unless you follow up. It's like you're inviting someone to get married and not following up, right? Nothing's going to happen. So, Danny, introduce yourself and uh, let's see what. Uh... Sure. And I might be sharing my screen. So uh, let me see if I can. Oh, yeah, I can. Cool. All right. Before I share my screen, I'll wave to everybody and say hello. Very nice to hang out with you today. Um, hey, Diane. <laughs> see a wave in there. And um, yeah, so I'm, I, I help real estate agents, but I've been doing what I've been doing so I started in real estate in 2007, um, right away set up a team because I realized my strength is marketing, not contracts and paperwork. And so all I did was prospect, lead generate, like I made a game of the business where, because when I first started, none of my friends and family were going to be using me because I looked so young in 2007. Hey, you're starting I to get a little bit of like, gray hair there, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, it makes me, it makes you know, it easier. That's, that's the intellectual in you. His yep. brain is always Come. running. If you know Danny, he, he's like it's, Dr. Gadget. He's always got something he's working on and creating. And it, it, he's such a brilliant mind. He really is. I love him. I remember when I first- Always, started. always playing in the sandbox, man. That's what I like about real estate. So when I first told my parents I was getting into real estate, they were kind of like, um, why did we put you in school? <laughs> because I, I didn't have- like they, why did I go to high college? Why do, why do you go to university if you can just get a, your real estate license? They're like, you should have just gone right for real estate. And I'm like, yeah, but um, I'm a marketing guy and I could do marketing anywhere. R real estate is just where I choose to do it. So anyways, I'm really happy that, that I did. And um, we get to play in a sandbox. So we get to, as a real estate agent, there's so many hats that you can wear and that's both a blessing and a curse. The blessing is that you get to find what brings you joy. Some people, they're really good with door knocking and being face-to-face -face and community involvement, whereas others are more like numbers driven and they're on the phone prospecting, dialing for dollars. So it depends on what makes you happy. So what makes me happy is just creative marketing and always finding things that work because um, the challenge with marketing is you don't know what works and you don't know what doesn't work. And then um, you're kind of like wasting money. The other th part of wasting money is um, it doesn't make sense to pay for leads if you're not going to follow up with the leads that you've already got. And that is a big problem that our industry faces is that agents just want more leads because they want more business. But what they don't realize is that what they really need is more follow-up plans, Thank more follow-up yeah, you know systems. That's one of the things that what I was going to say, Danny, most agents have a hard time following up with leads and most shockingly past clients, you know? Yeah. And I know that's what you said you're going to talk about a little bit today because, you know, your past clients is your, your gold. That is your rainbow. You know how you see the rainbow and they say there's a pot of gold? Your leads or your past clients are your pot of gold. So you need to be able to follow that up and um, go from there. Because if you don't, someone else will, right? You know I that, and you that, and you wasted money on generating the lead to begin with. Yeah, it it costs you twelve times more to create a lead than it was on doing follow up. Then, so if you can learn to follow up, you've already spent your major expenses through so your marketing and your meeting them face to face or wherever you may have met, them, right? One yeah, the, pro the, the problem with follow up is the effort that it takes. <clears throat> it's not as fun as and sexy as the idea of just getting new leads. That's why people like the new leads is because it's just it feels better because it's instant gratification because you see numbers racking up of like, oh, good, it's working. But it's not really working if you're not working it. So at the end of the day, we still have to get dirty. We still have to play in the sandbox. You still have to roll up your sleeves. And um, so I'm going to show you a couple systems on following up with your leads. I'll, I'm going to start with <clears throat> one that I used <clears throat> right at the very beginning um, before I even had a CRM. 
So I'm going to encourage that you all use a database contact management of some kind, whether your company provides it, your team provides it, um, or your colleagues down the street, they're telling you, oh, you should look at this. So I don't care what platform you're using. Now, let me share my screen and I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to give you guys this as a template, by the way. So let me hit share screen. So everything and he's I... going to share with us here, he's going to share with us that I'll be able to email you guys out. And I have all your emails and that. So I'll send out at the end of the day, all these screenshots So he's going to share with us today. Right? Perfect. So yeah, this first one, I made it up in Canva, um, just so that you guys can edit it. But this is an eight and a half, 11 piece of paper. So the very first time I would uh, convert a lead, I obviously, I, I got their name, phone number, and email, and I put my notes in this section over here, but I always jump to the qualifying part. So it depends where the lead came from. So say the lead came from uh, uh, open house registration or uh, uh, MLS registration. They were looking at my listing on realtor.ca. So I call that, that person right away, and I'm like, hey, Joey, it's Danny Wood over at ABC Realty. I was hoping to um, catch you at an okay time, did I? And they're going to say, yeah, I'm like, awesome. So I wanted to say thank you so much because you created an account looking at real estate for sale here in Durham region. And I just wanted to bring it to your attention. When you're done looking at the new homes today, you're going to find that the, the homes that hit the market tomorrow, they're going to get mixed in with the ones you've already been looking at. So I was just curious, would it be a benefit to you if I set you up on a prospect match that shows you all the listings that match your criteria? And generally the people are going to say yeah or no or whatever, but now we got a conversation. So if they say, yeah, I'm going to be like, well, that's great. So um, if you were to move, when did you want to move by spring, summer, fall, or winter? And I put the words in their mouth because have you guys ever heard that buyers are liars? It's they just don't know. People don't know. They have a general idea. So they're not really liars. We're just being funny when we say that. But anyways, because they don't know, I don't want to ask them a question that they don't know the answer to. So instead of saying, when do you want to move by? You just leave an open ended question, but now you're ended four choices. So now I'm narrowing their thought process. So it doesn't matter what they say. They're going to say spring, summer, fall or winter. And I'm going to repeat that. So let's say they want to move in the fall. Yeah, well, I like on to this move in the fall, Danny. Okay, cool. So I'm going to check off fall, and then I move down here, and I say, well, that's great, Daryl. So if you wanted to move by the fall, when would it make sense to get in the car and start looking? And then... Well, the I don't know. Is... How long does it take me to get something? I'm not sure. I haven't done it in a few years. That's okay. Well, I mean, once, once you... Say you do your online research and you're finding a property... Um, when do you think it would make sense for you to start hopping into cars to actually go physically look at the property do you have a time frame for that well i think probably july or august at, at the, the the you know i don't want to be later than that but i want to move i'd like to be moving in by september by school right okay july or august that's fine so when that time comes or do you think do you i need to start thing? earlier <laughs> it's a the yeah, earlier is always better um to get a taste of the market for sure so i could definitely get you out this weekend if you wanted i wouldn't want to rush it either uh, first, to get things going, what I want to do is I want to send you a list of everything on the market to see what fits your criteria. And you said you were um, probably going to start hopping in a car maybe in June or whatever. When that time comes, do you have a realtor you'll be working with? Well, I don't right now. Right now, we just sort of look online, you know, and just see what's out there. Okay, no, that's good because I, I just want to make sure that I'm not um, stepping on toes because if you're under contract with somebody, then legally I'm just not allowed to work with you. And um, so do you already own a home? Yeah, I own it's one like right you... now. Yeah, I own yeah. one now. Yeah. Okay, so that home that you own, when you purchase another property, are you going to have to sell this one in addition to it? Or are you going oh, to yeah, keep I this have one? to sell. I definitely have to sell. Yeah. All right, perfect. Okay, so now I would start. I, I don't have to ask the renting question because he obviously said that he has a home that he has to um, sell. But say Daryl said, Oh, no, I don't have a home to sell. Then my question to them would be like, Oh, so you, you have a rental property? Like, when is the lease up? Right. So, my knowing lease that is up at the end of August, August 30th. August. Okay, cool. So, by me, I would write that down August 30th on, on this line. And what that does is it allows me to properly follow up with a person because I have better notes. And I don't know if you guys felt it, but when I asked the question of when that time comes, do you have a realtor you'll be working with? It felt very conversational. 
and fluid and it made sense that I asked the question. But if you just come right out the gate and ask that question, it's awkward and people tune into like, what's in it for that dirty realtor besides their commission? You know what I mean? All these stories playing in their head. But it is important for you guys to ask these internet leads or cold leads if they're working with a realtor. So I like the way that this format stacks the questions one after the other. So Daryl did- you have, So you made up that sheet. I'm just gonna yeah. add on here. So whenever I spoke to, I'm very old school. You see, I have a pen in my hand. Yeah. Whenever I'm talking to somebody, I'm just writing notes. Yeah. Like something, you know, young techie guys can type it up on your iPad, whatever the case, you can record it, whatever. But you need to take notes while you're doing it because afterwards you get busy and you forget. This is your memory bank to trigger you to go back when you're following up. So Very this is actually supposed to be um, a bunch of paper printed. So I would have a stack of this uh, in my briefcase. I had it at the office. I had it under the car seat in my car. I had it in the kitchen cupboard at home and downstairs on top of the Xbox. So no matter where I was, if I got a phone call from a, a sign call or an internet lead or something, I had this piece of paper that I could write all my information on. So yeah, it's absolutely just pen to paper because I don't like being on the phone with a person and having to like open up a CRM, start typing notes. Like they can hear you typing on the keyboard it's just distracting for both of you. So I like this piece of paper system. So pr when Daryl and I just did that little role play that he is selling a home, if he is selling, I would then move to this box down here. Oh, you are thinking of selling. So when um, you did purchase that property, was it ever listed on the MLS? Yeah, and it was listed on the MLS. I think it was about a, a year, year and a half old when I bought it. So okay, yeah, nice. but it was on the MLS. All right, cool. And then, so since you purchased that property, um, uh, was there anything that you did to either increase the value or decrease the value? Well, since we, we've owned the house, we've totally done everything all over. You know, kitchens, bathrooms, paint, hardwood floors, landscaping, new lighting, you know, so it's not the same house. It's been all, no. you know, there wasn't that old. It just, I want to update it into something more modern. Nice. So I would be adding all of those notes of what Daryl just related to up here. And then, um, so Daryl, since you did all these improvements and uh, you purchased the property like a year and a half ago, what price do you think the home is now worth? Like, what were you hoping to sell well, it for? Well, the bills that we I had that are actually from the bills, the, the total amounts out to 363000 That's the amount of money that we had with the contractors and that to put into the house. You know, and at that time, I think we paid... 1.35 or something for it you know so yeah you're 363 you know you're you're right up there and then that's you know almost a year and a half the market was sort of up and down so you know i'm thinking one eight one nine i don't know something like there okay yeah no that's a good barometer so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull up all the actual activity just in that pocket. I'm going to email it to you so that you can actually see what the current homes are selling for and what your current competition would be. Uh, so tell me about that property. And actually, I could actually skip this part, by the way, because when I first asked you, was it ever listed on the MLS? And you said, yes, I actually have all this information, the bedrooms, the bath, the garage, like I got all of those notes from the MLS. So I can do them a favor and get them off the phone as quickly as possible. So I could actually move away from that and then get back to your buying criteria. So see here how I have east, west, north, south, all of city. When I email you guys this template, I would actually have your areas typed out. Oshawa, Whitby, Pickard, you know what I mean? So type them all out. That way, because like say I did Durham region, which includes Bowmanville. Um, how many letters are in the word Bowmanville? Or how many letters are in the word Mississauga? Like the whole alphabet? Yeah. How long does it take you to write all of that out? It takes forever to write out the word Bowmanville and Mississauga. So instead, if I would just have it pre-typed on this sheet of paper, I could just check it off. You know, when you order a pizza, you call up Domino's and you order a pizza and you're like, I want a free cheese, pepperoni, blah, blah, blah. They're just checking off. Tick, 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 tick. So that's what we're doing here. We're creating a check sheet so that when a person is buying, you don't have to write everything out. All right. So say... This is a very good conversation that I had. It does sound like I'm going to be able to work with them. See where I have on their notes where I put their ID name, number. phone number, email. Yeah, see the ID number. 
So the very first person I called using this was ID number one, and that was page one. And then I put it into a binder. Page two, ID number two, page one, page two. So I put all of them into a binder in chronological order. And on the cover of the binder, I had this calendar printed. So this calendar here has, um, so let's say you wanted to start looking on um, in June around the third week for whatever reason. If that was the case on June, on the third week, I would write page one or page 72 or page three, whatever Daryl's page number. Whatever is my number is. Yeah, and I just, on, on this, I just have a whole bunch of numbers written in this box. It's messy, you know what I mean? It's my eyes only. And so I pick up the phone, I call him, and then he's like, oh yeah, we're, um, I know we wanna move by September, but we're not gonna start looking until maybe end of July. Okay, so then I'm gonna go to July and I'm just gonna, I'm just going to write Daryl's page number here and then put him back in the binder. So this little paper system, let me grab everybody the templates for that now. So I'm going to share this as a template. Oh, actually, no, I got a better resource that I can give you. Hold on. I'm going to give you a different one. You're going to get way more stuff when I share this one. So if I go here, ring. Copy. Okay, when I send you guys this link, scroll down past all this stuff. Uh, Canva. Uh, buyer letter, seller letter, templates. Oh, wait. No, that doesn't have what I wanted. Okay, let me go back to Canva then. Uh, copy template. Okay, and then in Zoom chat, I'm going to put the count. Uh, template number one. All right, now let me grab this one and share this as a template. Copy. Template number two. Perfect. Okay, there you go. You guys all in the chat. Make sure you, whoever is in the live Zoom chat right now, make sure to click those links and like email them to yourself or copy it um, if you want. The other thing that I want to give you guys as a template is... Uh, Let's do, let's do this one. Okay, so I am gonna give you guys this uh, Google Doc and uh, you can type it up, edit it, make it your own. I'm just giving you the basis of um, if you wanted a follow-up plan, these are some ideas that you might wanna consider. So uh, I'll start with this um, buyer purchase seven-year touch plan. So I'm gonna stop sharing for a second to come back and tell you a story. One of the best surveys that I've ever heard in my life was actually done at NAR, National Association of Realtors. And on the survey, they asked buyers, um, would you ever use the realtor again? And it was overwhelmingly, yes, we would. On the exact same survey on page number two, it said, if you used a previous realtor in the past, did you use them again? And the answer was overwhelmingly no. <laughs> so how is it on the same survey, the, the consumer is saying they 100% would use that realtor again, but in the reality of it, they didn't. Well, I'll tell you, it's because after the realtor sold them the home and they lived there three years, five years, seven years, or maybe longer, time goes on and the agent didn't stay in touch. That's At all, maybe not even once. Yeah, so I am going to share with you a sample of a seven-year touch. So on the day of closing, so the day that the home is closing, we have a tool at Brokerage Nation um, that sends an agent to the text a reminder. So uh, it goes out to the listing agent and says, today is a closing day for contact name. You should call to congratulate, and we put their phone number. Obviously, that is something you should do. If you wanted, where's my phone? I want to do something else. If you don't have some sort of automated tool that can allow you to do stuff like that, you could just use your phone. So here I am, I'm on my phone and I'm going to say, um, remind me on September 11th that Daryl King's home closes. Boom. So on my phone, all I did was tell the voice assistant, whoever, I got an iPhone, so obviously it's the Surrey girl. 
Um, so I, I have a little button on the side of my phone that activates the voice command. So I just said to it, remind me on such and such date that what kind of phone you got. Go... What? It's your phone on Apple. Yeah, Apple. So everybody has it too much. But it, even if you got an Android, you still got like Google Android or what, whatever the yeah. Google Assistant is yeah. called. And you're like, hey, Google, um, remind me on September 11th that Daryl King's home closed or whatever. And then it, the, the morning you wake up, it's just going to remind you. you know, I didn't have to log. I didn't even have to unlock my phone. I just like told it what to do. So that's a good little backup. If, if you don't have anything else, I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. Okay, so three days after the home closes, we automatically send them a text that says, hey, Joey, uh, it's Dan Wood. Your testimonial would mean the world to me. Would it be possible to leave a Google review here? And we have a link that sends them to the Google. And then we also send them an email that says, hey, Joey, I just sent you a text about this too, but some people are better with email. Would it be possible to help me out by leaving a testimonial? Clients testimonials really make a difference when others are searching online, including a written, uh, ri including a review written by you would really mean the world to me. I have a stretch goal to get more reviews this year on our business page, and then I would link to it. Then uh, one week after they've moved in, we send them another text to the client that says, hey, hey, Joey, uh, a week or so after you move, you'll usually catch wind of others thinking of moving too. Do you know anybody who has mentioned buying or selling a property, especially with it so fresh on your mind? I bet you're a real magnet for those conversations these days. Smiley face. Uh, then 14 days after that, it's going to send another text that just says, hey, Joey, it's been a few weeks. How's everything going as the dust settles? Just checking in. So this is just like a really like, I'm still here for you. I'm still alive. The deal is done, but I'm, I'm still thinking of you type of text. Three months later, send them a text. Hey, Joey, uh, do you by chance use social media? If so, what platforms do you prefer? I'd like to stay connected and in touch. I do that, me personally, Danny Wood, um, for whenever I do a conference and a person attends my conference or seminar or whatever, um, I, I tag them in my database as attended an event. And anybody who's attended an event of mine, they get a text about two days after the event of just that saying, hey, by chance you use social media, if so which platform do you prefer? I'll go follow you. So I'm not telling the people to follow me. I'm just creating conversation and asking what platform they like, and then I'll go look them up and add them manually. But it, social media is social. Like it, it's not supposed to be some sort of automated spam thing. It's social media is supposed to be an extension of you. So I have to put in the legwork and I actually have to like follow a person, send them a voice message, whatever. So anyways, three months after the people have moved in, it's just a good little safety net to make sure that you're connected with them on social media. Um, then six months later, I send them a text that says it's been six months since the closing date. And this is an agent directly to the agent. So it go like say Daryl's the agent. He's going to get a text that says it's been six months since the closing date. And we put the closing date with the client's name, with the client's phone number, and a prompt for Daryl to just like call them and see if they've done any future improvements planned, um, their favorite aspects, and it's moving in and really just to recap. Oh, who is them. this going to? Is this going to the client or to the buyer agent? Uh, you as the agent. Is, you're set it. So I was the buyer agent and I sold them the house and it was your listing? No, you're the, you're the agent and this is your client. Oh, okay. This is just reminding you. Me of, sending um, it to the, the clients. Okay. Yeah, it just reminds you to call them, basically. So this and, is your six-month uh, follow-up. Yeah, well, this one goes on for seven seven years. Years. I'll I won't. Yeah, well, because this is they they purchased a home. You helped them purchase. They the got home, a seven-year now... drip campaign with them. Is what you're doing, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. It, guys, it is so crucial. Listen, even if you miss the whole year, if you get them on their happy anniversary or happy birthday, you got to touch base with them. Really, what is it, 33 times a year you should touch base with your, your database? Is that the, the saying? Yeah, that's the magic touches, number. 33 touches you have to touch your database or your past clients, whatever you want to call it, sphere of influence, whoever. And if you're not doing that, 
guess what? Someone like me or Danny is going to come into the picture and they're going to eventually push you out, right? Even, I remember even if it was, was just birthdays. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Even birthdays, just simple birthdays, my anniversaries. Yeah. You know, I remember many times when I was practice, prospecting, you know, I had a few agents say, oh, I've been talking to these people for two or three years. And then I'd come in and I would just get their listing. And and then, you know, they say, how they phone me up? Said, How'd you get that listing? I said, when is the last time you spoke to that person? And it'd be like a year ago, right? So yeah. if you're not in their mind sooner than a year, someone like me or Danny or another top agent's going to come into their 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 mind. So that's why it's so crucial to continually trip and follow up constantly. It's like going to the gym. I went to the gym one time. Hey, I worked out. I'm in good shape now. I don't need to go for another year. That's not going to happen, guys. You got to continuously do this daily, weekly. So if you have 200 people that you have to contact for the year, break it down into 200 into little sections that you're you're putting a drip campaign with them constantly. Is that what you do, Danny? Or you're going to go get into this further? Yeah. Um, so we, it, this one was specifically just for after a buyer yes. purchases a property, yes. but there's other, one. I won't read the whole thing. I'm just going to email this to everybody. Anyways, there is a couple fun ones. So um, we, ju we just uh, had a client appreciation party. The first one since COVID the clients right? absolutely loved it. They were so happy. You know, they all got gifts. They had fun, they had food, right? This is a fun one on the five year mark. So right on their five year anniversary, it says, uh, congrats, Joey, on approaching the five year mark. Fun fact, did you know a person moves every five years on average? Think you'll be settling in for another five or do you predict a future move? Either way, I'm always here for you touching base as I know it's been some time. That's a fun one. I I, I don't know. I just really like the way that. Well, I like out. the way that says it's like knock, knock. Hello. It's time to move. Right. That's really yep. what you're telling them. And it is the average person moves every five years. So they and it's not it's not always asking for the referral, like on the six years here. Uh, how's everything going? It's literally just the question of how it's going. OK, so let me zoom out for a second. We got the seven uh, seller one as well. OK, here's a good open house plan. So say you do an open house this weekend. Um, what we do is uh, we have a QR code that when the people come into the open house, they scan the QR code and it takes them to a form for us to capture their name, phone number and email and for them to check off whether they're working with a realtor or not. And then um, from that, we automate the follow up notes about the open house that we're at. Okay. You could have it directly on the computer and have the QR code. But what I, I encourage people not to do is to just have a piece of paper where you get people to like write their information out um, because then you have homework. You got to take that information and then type it out into the CRM. And the last thing you want to do on the weekend after gathering up all the signs, you get home, you're tired, you got to you undressed and get comfortable or whatever, and you got to start cooking dinner. The last thing you're going to do is pipe up your laptop and start adding contacts to it. So I encourage just get it over with since you already know you got to do it. And so I'll show you an open house plan that we have created. All right. So as soon as a person registers using that QR code, we, our system waits for two hours and then sends them the thank you email. Because if a person registers and then right away, they get a thank you email right on as soon as they registered, they know it was automated. So we don't want them to feel that it was automated. We want them to think that the agent actually thought of them. So we have it wait for two hours. So the open house is over and then it sends an email thanking them. So it's like, Joey, I want to thank you for visiting my open house. Let me know if you have any follow-up questions. I can send you more details, book private showings and answer any questions you have. I'll send you a text to make sure you get this email. I'm here to help. Then we wait one minute and then the system automatically sends them a text. And the text says, uh, thanks for coming to my open house, Joey. Uh, let me know if you have any follow-up questions. I'm here to help. Do you want me to keep you updated on this property? By the way, I'll send you an email too. And we put their email. And we're just asking and confirming if that's the best email. So then it waits a day 
and sends them a text. So this would be on the Monday, for example. And it's like, hey, Joey, I was thinking about you visiting my open house. And I was wondering if I could help you during the information gathering stage. Oh, I actually wanted to edit this. Hold on. What areas are you... Something like that. All right. Uh, perfect. Okay. So what areas are you considering moving to? This is just like a conversation starter. So we're trying to get them to engage and, and create conversation. Then it waits another day and it sends them, Joey, I don't think I mentioned it, but we have a free house value report for sellers. Would you be interested in the copy? And then it notifies the agent. Our, we text the agent directly and say, we've automatically sent three texts and one email to Joey about the open house you met at. You should review the conversations tab. This is something specific to us because we can actually like link up with their CRM. But anyways, it's a reminder to the agent that's like, hey, three days has passed. Because I think of all the, of, I'm going to stop sharing for a second, of all the leads that you can pay for, open house leads they're way further in the funnel because they're actually hopping into a car this weekend. So I, I love open houses because it, okay. First when I of first all, it's started, face -to -face, Danny, it's face to face. You're not yeah. in church, their space. They're coming to you. And that's what I try yep. to tell the agents. The number one criteria right now is open houses because they're already looking, they've shopped around. They may see that this is an area they're looking at. So they, they pretty much got an area because they're looking in that area. They're already got in their car. They got the kids. They got their picnic wrapped up for the day. And they booked off time to go look at houses. So when they just say, oh, we're just in the area. Well, where do you live? I live in downtown Toronto. Meanwhile, we're out in Durham or Richmond Hill or Aurora, whatever. Well, they just didn't drive to Durham, Aurora, Richmond Hill. They drove to look at neighborhoods to go buy a house, right? So they're a hot, hot lead. Now, unfortunately... I can tell you 98% of the agents don't follow up with those clients or even treat them well enough when they're at the open house. So, oh, man. So when I first started 2007, I was an open house machine. I would do like some weeks I would do four in, in the week. And um, so I would do two on the weekend and two during the week. And I what, all I did was I called all the agents at our office that had any vacant listings. If they had a vacant listing, I called up the agent and said, hey, I noticed you got a listing. Uh, can I do an open house for you? And they're always like, yeah, of course. So I'm like, perfect. Now it is vacant. And because it's vacant, I'm not going to be bothering anybody during like dinner time or anything like that. So I'm actually going to run a couple open houses during the weekday. Is that okay? And they're like, sure, sure go sure. ahead. Be my guest. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. And so I turned other agents' vacant listings into my office because nobody was walking into my home and the the office that I actually had, nobody was walking into that. So because I had to stand somewhere and do my work, prospecting, follow up, why not do it from an open house? So I turned other agents' vacant listings into my mobile office. And every week I just tried having like two to four different locations. Plus it gave me um, marketing. So social media, because I could promote about the open house. I could post on Craigslist, Kijiji, and Facebook Marketplace about the open house. I could go um, door knocking around the neighborhood of the open house, like the week leading up to it. I could do newspaper ads, direct mail. Like it gives you a lot of leverage, an open house does. And um, so, but one of the challenges is getting people's name, phone number, and email. So when the people come through the door, I explain to them, I'm like, um, it's welcome to the open house. I would love to show you around. Now, because it is an open property and we're just having absolute strangers walk through, we really do need you to register. Um, it's, it's company policy. So if you can just register, either scan this QR code or fill in your info here. And if you're working with a realtor, like I'm not going to follow up or spam you or anything, but we do have to just have a log of who's in, in the property. So they're going to then register and, and do their thing. And I love open houses. Like, um, I don't love open houses because I have to give up my weekend. That part sucks. I get it. But, um, I did the, op some, op a lot of open houses during the weekday as well. I was so, king of anyway. open houses also, Danny. I used to do two on a Saturday, 
and two on a Sunday. So, and, and then we didn't have the computers. We had the yellow book. Like I'm dating yeah. myself as a dinosaur, but, uh, you know, we just had a yellow book that used to come out once a week. So I made everybody sign in and it was very simple. You didn't sign in, you couldn't come in. Open house means, you know, my sellers are asking that they want to know everybody that came into the house. If it's a nosy neighbor or if it's someone from wherever it was, they, it's their house, it's their right. And as, as representing the seller, this is what I'm asking. If you can please leave, sign in, make sure that it's the proper information. I don't want false ID or whatever the case might be. Now we have the QR code, which are must see, much easier for them to do. And, yep. um, you know, so I don't. I find the QR codes are a thousand times easier because it's right there. You don't have to do the feature sheets, hand it out, whatever. Oh, and, I actually uh, made a QR codes template. Where did I make that? Here. Yeah, yeah I made it uh, like uh, just a clean little sign and she's got all like it would have your brokerage stuff down at the bottom. Um, and yeah, when a person scans this QR for people that don't know how to make QR codes in Canva, by the way, if you click over here on the left where it says apps and then type in QR uh, QR code, it'll be this first one and it's absolutely free. And you just enter the link to the form or the web page that the people have to register on. Yeah. Uh, here, I'll send you guys this. Let me just uh, change this for one second. Agent name. We're using that now ourselves, Danny, in our team. All the that's cool. how I've cut out feature sheets and we're doing that and that's it. It's done. People don't like all the paperwork around. They don't like this, that. Then you run out of feature sheets. You've got to go run it more there back later on. Yep. So it saves a lot it, of stress and this, headaches. When I, I want to give you guys... But open houses to me were the, were the masterpiece because, you know, I'm not prospecting to them. We advertise and market the open house and, and the people are coming in. And, and generally, you know... If it was a busy open house, I would always look for the ones that I thought were were the people that were most serious. You know, I'd always greet them and I'd ask them qualifying questions. So by doing that, I could generally tell who was the most serious and I would devote more of my time with them than maybe somebody else that might have been in there. So it's yeah. having a quick eye and understanding and reading who's more serious than the next. But I always made little notes on everybody that was there, whether they had a little baby, they had a red car, a brown car, you know, nice car, yeah. something like that, or whatever. Yeah. I because the problem is if you get 10 or 20 people through there, you I couldn't remember. remember who's who. So I yeah. always think you, you know, do ID. I would always write my little notes on the back of the paper they left right away to scribble a little note, da 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 da, da just to trigger my mind. And then afterwards I would write more notes on them. So then I could say something, oh, nice to see that you came in from Toronto, you know, and your, your family lives around, you know, two blocks around the corner. You know, I can see that, you know, you really like this area. Is there any other areas you'd consider? So, you know, following up and then following up with some of the things you spoke about, that really, they can really appreciate that even more so. Because most agents don't follow up and they don't Need remember it. who who was. They got a telephone number and they say, oh, it's John Doe and Mary Jane. And they go, hi, John Doe and Mary Jane. And they wouldn't know if that was one number, first number one come in or number 10. They have no clue. So by writing your little notes, you know how you did your ID, number one, number two, same yep. thing. You know, have something that's triggering you that you can reflect back and that we can have a conversation. Because guys, it's about bonding, right? You can be a great salesperson, but you want to be a really great salesperson. It's not about you. It's about them. And the more you can think about that, you know, I, I used to go and go see open houses with other agents. And they'd be sitting on the couch watching football. Guess what? Yeah. Football was on every Sunday, sometimes Saturday. Guess what? That TV was on every time. So if they come in, they want to watch it with me a little bit, they can watch football. But I would always get up and greet them. I tell them the score baseball games on the Toronto Blue Jays, whatever. The TV was always on because I wanted them to make it feel like home, right? You know, I could have put on some other station but I wouldn't have been interested in watching it myself. But I don't just sit on the couch. I have it for a conversation piece, see if they're into sports. Most guys are into sports, and a lot of ladies also, right? Blue Jays lost I, last 
<laughs> I, I gave everybody the template to that uh, open house sign. So it's in the Zoom chat. You all can have it, click it, edit it, make it your own. Um, the one thing, so bread, what we're getting at is breadcrumbs. You have to have and leave breadcrumbs. You have to pull out all the breadcrumbs from the people when you're at the open house. All the little little details that they say, it's really important to make notes. So on our system, when a person scans the QR code and then enters their information, and then two hours later, it sends them the follow-up email, right away, the agent, it already is added to their phone. And the agent can just pull it up and make notes live, like as the people are walking out the door. So it just makes it really fluid and easy. Okay. Justin, so I'm gonna here, my marketing guy, I said, listen, yeah. We don't, we don't do an automatic feedback, but I said, we need to invent that right away. Right. You know, cause what yeah. we, we forwarded to the agents who ever did the open house, we forwarded to them. So yep. um, it's really their responsibility to follow up, but you know, maybe as a company, maybe we'll just say, thanks for dropping in um, and uh, say Chris or Vika was doing it or Majid or whoever it was, you know, thanks. They were there. They were happy to see you, whatever. Um, just, trigger it that way i don't know how to do it automatically at that point easy i do i help people set stuff like that up so if anybody on the call is like man i need help setting that up um i will actually show you let me type it out here hold on um and my oh hold on i'll do it in the zoom chat but I, i'm even thinking like so individual is more easier but as a company I want it to personalize. If I have like whoever's there, I want it to personalize to that agent that they were sitting there. And no, that's that, what they meant. yeah, that would be easy. Actually, you would make a, a new, a new form for each agent and then everything would be automated after that. I'm going to show you a page. All right. So for anybody who's on the call and you're like, man, this sounds awesome, but I have a hard time setting up my own systems. This is a new one that we're doing where the challenge with coaching. So here's the problem with coaching. Um, clients love talking ideas, but then as soon as they hang up the phone, they don't implement them. So this is a hybrid of I'm your coach. Once a month, we keep moving the domino forward and you just pick from this list. Do you want to clean up your database? That could That's usually the first one people need help with. Um, client onboarding forms, open house registration and follow-up plan. So you can just pick from this list every month, the next domino that you want added, and then we create it for you. So it's almost like a coaching slash virtual. Are you there? Danny? Danny, hello. We got you frozen in time. You must be in one of your frozen spots there. But I know you're at home. You're not on the road. So he might have to call in. But you can see why I love Danny. He, you know, I met Danny, was a young guy, came into the business, and uh, you know, it's like big daddy, like in little little boy Danny. And uh, you know, we've had a great friendship and share knowledge all the time with each other. Um because it doesn't matter what it is. He just, he's just like, he's always working on something. So he'll be back. He's, he's just popped out somewhere. He lost, lost his thing, but he'll be calling in and we'll get him. Just keep an eye out for him. So, you know, key to follow up. One thing that I always say is persistent pays off. So, you know, I, I have some things that I tell my agents and that, that, you know, did you know that persistence really pays off? That Only 10%, 80% of all sales are made after the fifth call. And I, I think it's a little higher. I went off this years ago and I increased it. But I think it could be more. But 80%, there's Danny. So I just finished this off. 80% of all calls are made after the fifth call. 48% of all sales, salespeople give up after that very first call. 25% give up after that second call. 12% give up after that third call. 5% give up after the fourth. Only 10% will make that fifth call. And they'll end up with 80% of the sales. So that's how important lead follow-up is. You know, that's why I was always one of the, the top 1% of the top 1%. 
because I didn't just call him five times. If I had to call him 10 times, I would call him 10 times. Like every time I'm going to get to a yes sooner or later. And it's just a matter of time. It might, might do today. It might not be next month. And it may not be the month. You know, as he said, he had a seven year span for them to go back and sell again. But my belief is I never worked with people like that. I worked with people myself. How I used to be taught and brought up was I used to work with three months, 30 days, basically, is where they worked on. When I first started, I did a video with Mike Ferry today, Danny. It was excellent, talking about cool. follow-up and stuff. It was great. You know, Mike was my <laughs> mentor for 19 years, right? right? So consistency, you know, what I write down here is if we can see this. I'll just put this out here. They can see this. So this is what I give my agents. So it says on here, key rule, keep it simple. Discipline every day. Commitment every day. Um desire every day action every day and accountability and then what we want to throw in there is follow-up so be a master of your scripts and your dialogues but be a master of your follow-up and you'll always have an incredible year is that not true yeah danny you Absolutely. make your whole coaching career out of this you know as a young young guy getting into business you know you weren't afraid to work like you said you were doing four open houses and you thought of outside the box and you're sitting there at a vacant house, making it like your office and like, hey, come on in. Right. So where else he's going to go sit in an office where nobody's coming to vis visit him. So he went out to visit them. Right. Bring him to your platform. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. and then when he got him to his platform, he continued to follow up. That's how he does his coaching business. You meet Danny. You're never getting out of his coaching business. He's going to be dri dripping on you every day. True, sort of, sort of true. No, I'm very unspammy. I it comes across. Oh, but you listen. Are... Then I'm just saying because I do, I do stuff with you all the time. So I, I, I guess I see you and we talk to each other and I, I get your information. But you know, it's not like you bug me. It's there for knowledge that I have, right? So yep. that's what I mean. Not you're not spamming me by any shape of the imagination. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like an art to have that fine line of like connecting and contacting a person with purpose without it always being about you. Cause if it's always about you, then um, people just don't tune in. They won't respond. They just know it's spammed garbage. Justin, so it, I want to uh, ask Justin here. He's with me, my marketing guy. Can you go take the camera back and do a quick shot of the guys in the office? And I want them to all give a big screen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. So I, they're all in the back office, a bunch of them there. And unfortunately, I really had wanted to do it live so they could have seen you and I right here. They can see us on TV here now. But it's so much fun when you get to see the action. So, you know, the next speaker I'll have, I'll have it right live in the office that we're side by side. And then they can see it live there. Because I know it's like going to watch a TV program. And whenever I went down to uh, Venice, you know, I got to go, I, I was always a volunteer and looking out for the guys that gave out the tickets to go backstage and see the TV shows. You know, I've seen a lot of great TV shows and, you know, sometimes it wouldn't come on for six or seven months later. So I'd always watch to see when, hey, yeah, I was at that one. That was a great show and this is going to happen, right? So, <laughs> you know, we're, we're winding down. So, okay. I, I'd like to say, what would be the one or two things you'd like to say? And then I'd like to open up to a few questions for somebody. Guys, if you have some questions, uh, throw it here in the chat. And then Danny or I would be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Because it's important that um, we can share. So what are your one or two things? I, I believe in follow-up to be probably one or two of the most critical things. Lead follow-up prospecting, probably number one. But number two, I'd say is follow-up. Because without the one or the two, you have nothing, right? What's yeah. your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you should. You always need to be prospect. I made a game of it. I wouldn't. I I I was the first in the office, unlocking the door, turning on the lights, getting the coffee going, and the last to leave, turning off the lights, locking up. That I'm not promoting the rise and grind, always work mentality, but in the early days of the career. Um, I had to, and it was fun. It wasn't a game. It wasn't a uh, work to me. It was a game. So that's why I was able to like push so hard. And uh, anyways, so I would make a, a, a scrap piece of paper, eight and a half, 11 sheet of paper, and I would draw a tic-tac-toe grid. 
on it. And I made a rule to myself that I wasn't allowed to leave the office until I've had 12 conversations with 12 people about real estate or it was uh, approaching nine o'clock because I didn't like calling people after nine o'clock. I felt like it could be too, too late. I should go to 11. Did she? <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Okay. So, or 11. And anyways, now. so I, I go now is 10. I capped it at nine. And um, so anyways, either I got 12 conversations and I could go home or I stayed at the office and I would just work on my systems as punishment because <laughs> you're you got to be i don't know it's like a it's a game if if you don't have joy with what you're doing joy is an our internal compass and if you don't have joy with the track that you're on right now what's going to happen is you're going you're to look back and you're going to have regrets of like why did i spend five years doing this business the wrong way not having fun like you're going to have all these stories in your head and so what i'm going to suggest people do is make a game of it whether it's reconnecting with your friends and family and just getting face to face and meeting up with them over coffee, that could be it. Maybe it's doing events, maybe it's doing seminars, maybe it's being a, a power door knocker and you're gonna like pack a lunch and do door knocking every day for the summer and try and rack up 20,000 steps a day. You know what I mean? Just like whatever the game is, I want you guys to have fun with this. Um, it doesn't make sense to generate more leads if you're not gonna follow up with the ones that you've currently got. So if you are having a problem with lead follow-up, make sure to get the templates that I put in the Zoom chat. Here's my cell number here. If any of you want to text me, you can text me at that number. I'll send you the We're going to email out everybody that's on here today, these texts, these plates. And and right okay. now, and right now, so my my team, they're they they went through a, a script training yesterday. We had a two-hour training of a script war, scripts and objections by some of the top agents. In North America. So cool. not the whole team watched it, but a number of them were in here yesterday. So in three weeks, we're going to have a script off here in the office. We're going to have a $300 first prize, 200 for second, 100 for third. So it's not only about the money. Me and you were in there. We know we're doing that for bragging rights, right? That we're going to be the masters. So I'm hoping everybody steps up and gives it their best shot because there's no such thing as a loser in the group. You're going to win because you're going to be better than you were three weeks ago. And then after that, you'll be better than that. You know, I used to go down to California, you know, once or twice a year for just script and role playing. And I remember I used to go to uh, my good friend Mike's office for scripting. And I used to blow out the competition. Everybody was there. They put us in little cubicles and you'd bring all your leads down with you and you would just call everybody. Well, I made it a point to smash everybody. I mean, whatever record they had, my goal was to smash every record they had. Appointments, leads, listings, sales in that duration that I was there. And it was a game. It was just out there to go full out and put out. And, you know, that's how you have to look at it. You know, when you're going forward, move forward, right? There's no such thing as backwards. Don't let all the side blinders, because too many get blinded by too many distractions you know, white, dark noise, whatever, the drunk monkey. Look at it right here. We have the little, <laughs> little bear right here. Look at him. He's so cute and cuddly, right? So he sits right in behind me. This is the little mascot because we gave up a bunch of stuff to charity. So he's our little bit, bit teddy bear here. I got to bring him around the office more often. So it's just a matter of giving a little hug and a little share, right? This care bear, right? He feels soft and cuddly. <laughs> So we're going to have days that you don't want to do it. But you know what? It's those days that you master those days, come over the repetitions of boredom and be successful there. And you're always going to be successful. Look at this guy. Everybody want to give him a nice little hug? If you're in the <laughs> office, you can come in and hug him. And if you're virtual, we'll just give you a little hug. They'll say hi to you. Hello. How are you? My name is Care Bear. I care for everybody. I love everybody. Hey, where's uh, Mr. Bill Murray? Let's show them Bill Murray, right? Bill Murray is a very good friend of mine. I love Bill Murray. So Bill Murray is their cat. Him and his wife's cat is just not Dan. There's Mr. Bill Murray there. Hello, Bill. How are you? Hi. Right? Look, look at the size of this cat. How old is he now, Dan? Oh, he's a street cat, so I don't know how old he is. We think yeah. he's 15. Yeah, you've had him for quite some time, right? Yeah. So he, he's part of their uh, family there. You know, if you're into pets, 
you know what it's like to have a family member. I know one of the girls, the office manager, just had to put their dog down last week. So we feel bad for her because it's it's like family, right? It just breaks you up. So, you know, to have something like that, you got kids, it's great. Grandchildren are great, you know? So you always have to have a purpose. Why are you doing this, right? What What is the reason that you're doing this? And, and you know, we're going to be doing a vision board. Danny, you should come to us with your vision board. You'd be fun to have with our vision board. Maybe we can get everybody to do it on Zoom, right? We're going to do it in class here, but I cool. think it'd be fun to do it on vision board to invite everybody in, right? And you with your yeah, crazy would mind fun. would be a lot of fun. I mean, I can imagine the things you want to put out there, right? Yeah, include me on that. I'll I'll join if I can, yeah. virtually or live. Right. So does cool. anyone have a, a question here? We've got two minutes left. And uh, did you go back there? Back where? What? Oh, did you? I didn't see uh, all the team members. I thought you couldn't put that up there. No. Oh, I want to get it up there on the thing, right? Oh. So. Hey, team. They're 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 there in spirit. They they're there in spirit. Well, they're actually there live. So I mean, it just the way they have it. Can I get into there? There's Tara. Here, go into this thing here. How do I get everybody in there? I'll just use my phone and connect me in. He's going to use his phone and try and get everybody in there, right? So she's in. She's in her little office there. I can see where she's at. I'm trying to get into the boardroom right now. What's that? No. So I have a question. Whenever. Go ahead, Tara. Yeah, you can ask it. Hey, Dan. Hey. Um, first of all, thank you so much. Secondly, I saw that you shared this um page i think it's your front page um showing how to clean up your database and all of those other things how do we access those so the oh you, you can't access it when you click the link um no i'll get it to him dan no worries everybody that's on okay. this call we're going to email you everything that was on here today that no one will miss anything so I want to take this time out and first of all, the sharing on the mindsets with uh, Dan Wood, uh, Broker Nation and Daryl King here at the Daryl King team. I'd like to, there's uh, Napoleon, he's gone into the back. Hey guys, give a wave out here. There's some of the team oh, there. Wow. Hey, there they are. Holy Next crap, you got a big one there. See, there's that the team there, right? So they're all watching in the back boardroom there. Cool. So how'd you guys do back there today? You can hear okay, right? Un un unmute them. Everybody, we got a nice little hands there. So we, we like to thank everybody. Thank we all have fun. There we go. We're going live here with them here in the back room. Hey, guys. It's going to cause echo. Yeah, a little echo there. So, you know, everybody has certain things to do every day. So we'd like to thank everybody here. So the next episode of Sharing with the Mindsets with Daryl King. We'll see you next time. Thanks again for everybody, Dan. We will talk again. I love you, brother. You're the best. And uh, one of these days, I'll get out to Vancouver and we'll go do Stanley Park on the bikes and that. I'm yes. going to be at Calgary on Thursday, you know. I'm, yeah, you want to go to Banff? I'll be there on uh, Thursday. Friday, wow. I'll be at Banff, uh, actually. I mean, I, I'm always down for anything like that. Yeah. but well, uh, I, I'm going to be in Banff on uh, Friday. I'm going to go there Thursday night and I'll be there all day Friday. Right. Okay. So cool. let's uh, it up. Let's go. I got to right. rent a Corvette. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Yeah. It's, I love Calgary. You'll have fun. Uh, everybody is saying thank you. I, I individually, I'll just say thanks collectively yeah. to everybody. And if you missed me or whatever, this is myself, just go ahead and send me a text. If you want to connect about like whatever, setting up your systems or anything. So I'll leave it there and say, thanks a lot, Daryl. Hasta la vista, everybody. Be safe, be well. Thanks again. Daryl King shared the mindsets.